Hello and welcome to this SOLIDWORKS tutorial on modeling using pictures and surface modeling. Now we're going to make this Mortal Kombat 11 scorpion mask in this tutorial and we did it using these two photos. Here's the front and here's the side. So I'm going to show you how to make this 3D model using just those photos and a little bit of ingenuity. So let's just jump right into it. So here we are at the start and the first thing we need to do is create a sketch with a picture. So to do that, you make a sketch like you normally would, but then you go into Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture. Navigate to whatever picture you want, and then you can input this into your sketch. So I'll scale this down a little bit. I'll move it over here. Uh, you can rotate it over in the left menu. And what you could also do is using this blue line, you can specify the actual dimensions of this photo um, from whatever points you'd like. So there's two points. I'll say this is 100 millimeters and it's, it's now made it that. Um, I'm not going to save this because I've already done it, but there is the front photo. And now I'm about to put a side photo in, but um, I need to make sure they align properly. So what I did before that is I made a series of horizontal lines on the right plane that intersect key points. So you can see this one intersects the top. This one intersects this ridge here, the peak of this um, first feature. This one here intersects the bottom of this feature, and then so on and so forth. So each of these lines is intersecting a key point um, in that front sketch. Um, and the reason for that is so that when I bring in my side picture, here it is, I can make sure that they line up. So top point, top of this point, top of that point. Each of these key points has been lined up, so I know I've rotated this picture um, to match the front as accurately as possible. And now we have, if I hide these guidelines, now we have the front and side views of the sketch we're going to make. So that's the first step in this process, uh, getting these two sketches in and getting them aligned properly. So now that we have these front and right pictures, the next thing we're going to do is sketch out the profiles so that we can use them in a sketch on sketch projection. So here I'm going to sketch this first profile. I will show you by removing the picture where one by one I sketched each of these um, profiles in the first ridge from the side. I'll bring back the picture so you can see. I've sketched out this first ridge. Now there isn't a ridge here, but I would like I want to just continue this line up because it will make my surface creation much simpler. Once you have each of these lines, the next step that you need to do is from a second angle. So I'm going to use the front plane because I have um, a picture for that. But from either the front or the top, you need to specify a second um, dimension where you can then do a sketch on sketch projection. So you need to make a second series of sketches. I'm going to show you from the front. I need to make sure that each of these sketches, because I'm going to use front 1A, side 1A, front 1B, I'm going to use pairs of them to project, are the same height. Each key point is lined up at the same height so that when I project them, they start and end at the exact same point. And once again, just like the last, like the last step, one by one, making sure that all the key points are at the same heights, I sketch out this top curve. I will hide the front so you can see that better. There is the front view of each of those curves that I've created. And now, using the front and side curves, I can one by one use curves, project curve, sketch on sketch, and I select the two sketches that I want and project them on one another. And I will get this 3D set of curves. And that will create this, this nice blue line we see here that's creating a 3D set. So that's, that's the first step. Um, and this is going to be almost all of this work, creating a side profile, creating a front profile, and then projecting them on one another to create a 3D series of curves, which will then create surfaces between. So now that we have this first set of curves, the next thing that we can do is create a series of 3D sketches that will subdivide them into much more manageable areas that can be boundary surfaced. So the first thing that I did was the front edge. Um, this actually isn't a 3D sketch, it's just a, an edge that is following the nose curve here. And then one by one, I created a series of 3D sketches that would subdivide this area up further. Um, to do these 3D sketches, you go into Sketch, 3D Sketch, and you just start curving. Most of these are either vertical lines, or uh, just straight lines, excuse me, 
or their curves and the splines and the the advantage of a spline is I can make sure, let's say I want to go from here over to here, I can make sure I click this line, I press shift, I click this line, I can make sure these two are tangent so that there's a nice even curve between these, um, between this line and this line. Um, and that will help break up these surfaces in a really smooth way. So that's what I'm doing with each of these um, curves is I'm I'm breaking this up using tangent curves um, in a much more manageable way where then I can one by one create boundary surfaces. So here's the first boundary surface. I'll show you specifically what I did. Top curve, bottom curve, and then two guidelines on the left and right, and it created this nice smooth um, surface. It is, there is a point here because this is not completely smooth. Um, but that's fine. That is where there's a point anyways in the actual model. So that was intentional. Then one by one, I started creating additional surfaces. So here's the second, and I'm going to show you something in here called tangents, tangency to face. So I selected, this is the top curve and this is the bottom curve. And then from the top curve, if I click on it here, I can go into, there's no, no curve influence, direction vector, or tangency to face or curvature to face. What tangency to face does is it notices, oh, I'm right beside this curve. These lines are, are tangent to the lines on this surface. We can make, oops, we can make these two surfaces tangent. And so that's what it's doing here. There's a little slider to let you specify how, how much of an influence that tangency has. Um, but usually I just set it to 100%. I make sure they're nice and smooth. Um, and that will make sure that even though these are two distinct surfaces, the the edge between them is almost imperceivable. Then one by one, we add more surfaces. So again, tangency to surface here, another, and another. And that gives us our first set of curves um, that is the kind of front nose area of the mask. So now that we have this first set of boundary surfaces, the next thing we're going to do is using this exact same process, create a top ridge here. So from the side, I one by one created these sketches that I could use within, in a sketch on sketch projection to create a 3D curve. I'll show you what I was following here. Just this top ridge here over to the end, up and then back. You'll notice that these two curves here, this point is not exactly the same as this point down here. That's because this, this picture is just a guideline. It's not actually set in stone. And also that this curve and this curve are separated as opposed to being a single spline from this point here to the back. The reason for that is if I'm looking at this from the front, which is where my second sketch is going to be for, for projection, there are two lines within this area between the top here and the bottom there. So if I were to put a circle here, it would project onto more than one sketch and that doesn't work for sketch and sketch projection. So you need to break this up into two if it's going down and coming back from the perspective of the second sketch. So that's what was going on here. And then just like last time, I created front sketches, making sure that each key point, so the bottoms and the tops and any, any distinct ridges in, in the middle were meeting at the exact same points. So that when I project on, projected them, sketch on sketch, it created this nice exact series of curves where I wanted them. So you can see that here, I'll hide this. There's that set of 3D curves using this front and side sketches. So now that we have these curves, the next step, just like last time, is to create 3D sketches between these hard points that will both break this set of curves up into smaller bodies that we can boundary surface, as well as dictate specifically how the curves are um, specified between these two points. And then just like last time, boundary surface using this front edge and this edge here with two guide curves. And I did curvature to face with this um, that, I'm, that I'm extruding from so that it will be nice and smooth as a transition from that point. Then once again, another surface here. This one does not use curvature or tang tangency to face because I wanted a hard ridge there. And then one last curve or one last boundary surface. This one does have curvature to face. And that will get you your first kind of top ridge section. So the next step is to create, I will show the sketch, 
this ridge down here going from these two boundary surfaces all the way up to this ear area. But if we look at the surface, we can see a little indent here. So we're going to create that first and then we're going to create the boundary surfaces from there. So I'll hide this image. And the first thing I do is create a 3D sketch from this vertex here directly towards the center of my mask, towards your cheek. And then I used a surface sweep. So using this 3D sketch as the profile and using this edge as the guide curve, I swept this 3D sketch and created a surface here. Then the next thing I did was created another set of 3D sketches, one from this bottom vertex here, again directly towards the center, and the other from that vertex up to the vertex of this um, surface, and I created a surface fill. Surface fill just selecting the edges of an enclosed um, sketch and creates a surface in between them. So now that we have that indent, the next thing we can do, just like before with the series of front and side sketches, we can create 3D curves and then boundary surfaces. So we'll look at those side sketches first, coming down and around. And I'll show you there they are. And then once again, these two are separated because it comes down and back up and I'm projecting it to, skirt to sketches from the front. And I will show you those. Same idea as before, making sure that each vertex is lined up exactly where you want it and then creating these 3D sketches but using sketch on sketch projection. And there we have it from this indent here all the way up to the ear area, these 3D sketch on sketch projections. So now that we've got these 3D curves, the next step should look very familiar. It's creating 3D sketches to break these up into more manageable areas and then boundary surfaces. So there's the first, there's the second, and then I created a composite curve to combine, I will hide it, these two 3D curves because it wasn't letting me use a boundary surface very well between these two points. So I made a composite curve and then one last boundary surface uh, to connect the bottom here and the top up there. To create a composite curve, you go into curves, composite curve, and then you select the two entities to join and it basically just turns two sketches into one. So now that we have these surfaces, which start to define the bottom edge, the next thing that we can do is start creating this surface here down at the bottom. And if we look at the image before that surface happens, there's actually a little bit of an indent uh, towards the face. So we need to make that as well. So the first thing we do to make this, hide this, is create a front and side sketch just like before. So the side sketch is exactly identical to this bottom curve that we currently have. It's just uh, a conversion. And the front is not identical, but it is very similar. So if you take a look here, it meets up with this point, this bottom point here exactly. And then over in this edge, it meets up with this bottom point exactly. But if we look at it from the front, it comes inside of the actual curve. So once we project these sketch on sketch, we'll get this internal edge here that we can use the surface fill to create this extension towards the face. So that's the first step is we've created this extension surface towards the face um, with a direct kind of side profile copy. And then we do another curve side front surface on surface or sketch on sketch projection to create that bottom edge. So now we have this extension and this bottom edge. Now I used, I created a cutting plane and I actually sliced, this used to be a single surface and I sliced it in two. So if I go before the split, you can see this was one single surface, but in order for me to use a boundary uh, surface or any type of surface creation, I wanted to split this surface first so there would be an edge here that would connect these two curves. Um, so I did that, I created a cutting plane, then I used split and I split this face. I'll show you exactly what I did. I split this face with this plane. I selected both of them because I still want both faces. And then I, now I have this new uh, face down at the bottom with just this angle. And then I created a boundary surface which I will show. And that 
is how I created this extension off from my previous lowest point towards the face and then drop down and now I have this very bottom edge. So the next area I'm going to work on is this large gap in the center where if we view the picture we can see it's indented and then there's a series of features inside. So we're going to start with that indent and just like every other time before we're going to start with side sketches that we're going to use for sketch on sketch projection. I'll show you them all here creating the start of this indent. Now you might notice that this sketch here and this sketch here go down and then back up. And that's exactly what I said not to do if we're going to do sketch and sketch projection from the side and front, because that will be two points from a, two, two intersections from a single point. However, for those two, we're actually going to start with the top. We're going to do a top sketch to use sketch and sketch projection. So that's why we're able to go down and back up is because from this view, it doesn't overlap at all. So there's the first two sketches. We can do sketch and sketch. And there is the curve. And then it's a series of front curves. So I'll show you those as well. Front curve, front curve, front curve, front curve. And these, once again, sketch and sketch projections are, you, are creating these 3D sketches. And then finally, this last down and up is a top curve again. So we can see it here. From the top, we created this 2D sketch, sketch and sketch projection, 3D curve, and now we've created an area to indent into. Next, we create a 3D sketch, connecting this vertex here to this vertex there, and then we just start creating boundary surfaces. You can also see a 3D sketch up here, and boundary surfaces. There's one, the next one is over here, then there, and then here. So next, if we look at the picture, we can see there is a ridge running along here that separates this bottom section from these top three triangles. And we're going to split this surface so that it makes that distinction clear. So to start, we create a 3D sketch coming from this vertex and coincident to this line here. And then we can create a plane that is parallel to the front plane and goes through this point here and then use that plane to split the surface. So we select that plane that we just created, which I've named splitting plane, and we select this uh, boundary surface and we cut it into two different bodies using the split command. And now there are two distinct surfaces here. Then the next thing we can do is drop a 3D sketch right down from this vertex here to that point there and then surface fill. So I'm selecting all of the edges, bounding this internal space here, and then I'm creating a surface in between them. And now we've got that internal area. Now the next thing we're gonna do is create some more sketch on sketch projections to define this, this little indent here. So from the side, there's the first sketch coming off of this vertex and then coming down, and it's not actually meeting any of these vertexes, it's just being offset from this one a little bit. And you can see that this comes down and back up, which means that we can't do sketch on sketch projection from the side and front. We've got to come down from the top. So that's what we did. There's the first sketch, and here's the second. And then if we do sketch on sketch projection, we can see what each of those create. Now we've got this curve off of this point and then coming down and not actually touching any of these lines yet, uh, but in the future we're going to create some 3D sketches which will connect these all up. So now that we've got these curves, let's make some 3D sketches, let's make some boundary surfaces. So here we can start to see our 3D sketches take shape. So a 3D sketch coming up from this vertex here, a 3D sketch coming up from this vertex. Now we don't want to use this actual whole edge here because it goes all the way up. So we could split the surface if we wanted or we could just create a 3D sketch from this vertex that goes up as high as we want. So that's what we did. And then finally, a 3D sketch across to connect each, each of these points and 
um, this edge to this edge here. Then create a boundary surface in this area here, create a boundary surface in this area over here. The reason that this is two separate ones is this doesn't go all the way across. So this needs to be split in some way, uh, and that's how we went about doing that. Then another couple 3D sketches up here and here. One more right here, because once again, this was a single curve, so we needed to create shorter 3D sketches, and then boundary surface. And one more. Now that we've got this edge, this is an enclosed space, we can create another boundary surface here. So we are slowly getting all of the curves that we need to create this internal structure here. We're going to start making some more curves here, some more sketch on sketch projections. I'll show you the side views first, down and over here. And then this first one, this first curve here, I did sketch and sketch projection from the front. So we'll see what that looks like. And then for the second curve down here, I did, I did sketch and sketch projection from the top right there. And I would have actually made the, the projection first before working on the second part. But once that's done and I show, I hide all of the uh, side and front and top views, we can see this curve here coming from this vertex down and around and connecting up with that vertex. The next thing I did is I created a composite curve. So these two curves weren't behaving exactly as I wanted for surface creation. So I combined them into one using composite curve. We've already done that uh, in this tutorial. And then I created a surface fill, which I will show. And there it is. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some more 3D sketches, and then we're gonna create some more boundary surfaces. So first, a 3D sketch from this vertex here over to this edge and then aligned with this curve down from this edge around and meeting up to this point here. I'm going to show you exactly how we actually make these type of sketches that run along a curve we already have uh, because that process is important. So to do that, I'll hide that. You go sketch, 3D sketch, and now I'm going to select this edge, convert entities. Select this edge, convert entities. So now that exact edge has been created as a 3D sketch. I'm going to then go into spline. And from this point, let's say over to this point, I'll show it normal to the right plane. I'll adjust these a little bit. I'm going to trim away the things I don't want. So using the trim tool, trim away this trim away this, and I'm going to convert this, this line here, and then I'm going to trim away everything above it. Now I can make this construction if I want, or I can just delete it now that I've used it for what I want. And finally, I'm gonna select these two lines, and I'm gonna make them tangent. And these two lines, and make them tangent. And that's how I, you create a curve here that's exactly aligned with the edge that has these kind of um, variations or go directly to a single point is you use convert entities and then trim away everything uh, away from the points that you've created. But I'm going to delete that sketch because we don't, we don't actually want it. It already exists here as sketch 40. Then once we have this curve, and this sketch here, we're going to create boundary surface here between this edge and this edge. And then boundary surface 38 is going to be up here between, we'll show, between these edges and this edge up here. Now we still have this little gap in here 
where uh, when I curved around, I left this open. That's the last thing we're going to do. We're going to create a 3D sketch using the same method I showed before. We're using 3D sketch, convert entities, and then trimming away the stuff we don't want to create this little border here so I can surface fill and patch that little hole there. And now the only thing left to do are these little triangle shapes, and we're just going to do that right now. And the first thing we're going to do is cut up this surface here to better match a 3D shape. So here we can see sketch 39. It's just on this right plane here. But we're going to use it to surface trim this surface. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did with this sketch. I created a line down here straight up. I created a line from these two vertexes. And then I found the midpoint from this one and approximately the midpoint from this one. And then I just used these picture, these reference points from the picture to create this zigzag pattern. Once I've created that, I can use it with a surface trim to cut away those areas underneath that curve. So surface trim, uh, and then I just select the, the surfaces that I want to keep. If I wanted to keep these, I would select these as well, but I don't, I want to remove them. And this has now been trimmed into this zigzag shape. Now the next thing I need to do is create 3D curves from each of these points coming over and then connecting up down at the bottom. Now I decided to make the curves from each of these. Obviously they're different start points, but they're going to end at the same point down here, which is what this picture looks like to me. There's a wide gap up here and it comes down to a single point down here. So I will show you each of those curves. So from the side, there's the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth side curves coming over and down into a single point starting from the top and bottom vertexes at each of these. And some of these I paired up with the front and some of these I paired up with the side. But here from the front you can see there's the first curve. This one is also from the front. This one came from the top. And then this two, these two are also from the front. Um, from the top, you'll see the last the last uh, sketch I used for, for sketch on sketch projection here. Um, and the reason that I would have used this top instead of instead of the front view is this side sketch likely comes back on itself or comes very close to back on itself. So sketch on sketch projection. I will show you each one. And I'll hide these. And now you can see these 3D curves connecting these points to a single point down here on this edge. Now the next thing we need to do is split this surface into three surfaces that I can use the edges to create boundary surfaces. So I created two planes using these points. So if I look at it from this way, one plane connecting this dot, one plane connecting this dot parallel to the front, and then a split where I split that surface into three. Then finally, I just use some simple surface fills to create all of those internal surfaces. And now we've got these triangle sections connecting this bottom area to the top and this top surface here down to these three surfaces down here. Finally, one of the last surfaces we're going to work on before we start trying to make this a solid is this top surface up here. So same as before, we start by sketching out some side sketches. One at the top here, one coming around the edge. You can see this one goes down and back up, which means it must be surface on surface projected from the top view, and that's what it is. We can see here that sketch. And the back over here was a surface on surface projection from the front view. There you can see that sketch. And when we do sketch and sketch projection, we create these curves here. Now we're going to create some 3D sketches. First, connecting this point to this point using a little bit of an arc, and then connecting this hard edge here up to just an arbitrary point on this curve that I thought would make a nice sweeped area, a nice, a nice smooth area. And then I created a surface loft. 
So surface lofts, a little bit different than what we've been doing before, uh, where instead of doing boundary from this edge to this edge, we're actually lofting through a series of, of sketches. So this is one surface, not two or three. And the way you do that is you just pick the sketches in order that you're going to loft through and then the guide curves again. And you create this nice smooth curve here. So now that we've created these surfaces, we can start to create a solid. But before we do that, let's take a look at the side photo that we were using as a reference. And it looks like we did a pretty good job of making our shape align with these if we hide it. Looks pretty good, pretty, pretty exact to the curves that we saw in that photo. What about the front? Same idea, it's pretty, pretty right on the nose of the curves that we saw in that photo. But if we look at it and we mirror it using a knit surface, so we knit all of these together into a single surface, and then we mirror it across the right plane, something's off here. It's either too far backwards or it's not enough out. There's some proportionality issue here with this X and the Z directions um, that's making it look a little wonky. So that happens sometimes when you're sketching with um, pictures. Maybe the, cur maybe the picture wasn't taken at the exact right angle. Uh, we can use scale to fix this. So you can find scale under insert, molds, scale. You'll see a little arrow. And what this is going to do is we're going to select this surface knit, which is all of, the, all, of, all of these surfaces here combined into one. And we're going to scale it by 75%, 0.75, in the Z direction. So it's going to shrink it in the Z direction a little bit, and that'll just make the proportions a little bit nicer when we go to mirror this and create it a solid. Now that we've done that, we can start to make some surface sweeps. So the first thing we do is create this 3D sketch coming off this vertex here, uh, tangent to this curve. So here's the sketch there, and we're going to sweep it along this edge here. And what that will get us is this surface here. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to use this edge as the profile here. And we're going to sweep it along these edges to create these set of surfaces. So now we've got these two surface sweeps. The next thing we're going to do is a surface loft. Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to loft a surface way down this line here using a 3D sketch down here. So I made sure that each of these lengths of sketch were the same length so that this distance is the same for each of these sweeps. And then I did surface loft from this point up here all the way down to this point, this line down here, and it created another surface. And finally, a couple more 3D sketches, one here coming out to this point and one coming from this vertex down here, tangent to this line, and meeting up with this vertex to create a surface fill right there. And now I've created a little bit of an extrusion off of these surfaces that we've created previously that we can create an internal surface for a solid. So next we're gonna surface knit all of these. So now it's all one body, and then we're gonna make a composite curve. I will show you what that is. I'm going to make a composite curve all the way around these three sketches. They weren't behaving exactly how I wanted them to, so I used a composite curve to make them one. One, two, three are now one single composite curve. Then we're going to create one more sketch, 56, right along here. And then we're going to create a boundary surface between that composite curve previously created and that sketch we just created right now. And voila, there is now an internal surface which we can use to create a solid from our external surface. So we mirror all of these surfaces across the right plane, we knit them all together, and it becomes a solid. That's a feature in Surface Knit. You select every bounding surface that you have. If those create an internal volume, you can, cr you can create solid. That, that option will then appear. And now this is a solid body, and I will show you that with this section view. This is a solid body and not a series of curves. 
So now we're almost done. We've created a solid mask, and all we're gonna do is put some cutouts into that solid. And we're gonna start with the mouth. You can see this sketch here. It's three curved slots where I, I, des I made a line for the start and a curve for the end. And then just at the start points, the midpoints, and the end points, I created these three curved slots. And then the next thing I did, if you've seen my mouse surfacing video, this will look familiar. I created a surface offset from these two surfaces with an offset of zero. So it's a surface copy. Then I split that surface using these cutouts. So as a reminder, I select the trim tool as my mouth, cut, my mouth cutouts and the selected bodies as this offset that I just created. And I removed everything that wasn't in that slot profile. So if I hide this body, you can see these three um, trimmed surfaces I've now created. Then I'm going to specify a direction that I want to extrude these. So here, this is just going straight from the origin. I specified that I want to extrude these surfaces in this direction. And then I used extruded surface to create extrusions from these. I'll show you what that looks like. Edit feature. I selected each of these faces and the direction that I wanted to extrude it and the distance I wanted to extrude it. And that created these three extrusions. Then finally, I need to cap these and I could just use filled surface or I could, I could use what I did, which is if you look up move, move slash copy body is what you want. Um, so that's what I did here. I selected each of these faces. I will show you. I moved them and I made sure copy was on because I want these to stay here as well in the direction that I extruded and by the exact amount that I extruded, 2.5 millimeters. And once I did that, it created these end plates. And then I used surface knits on each of these sections to create solid bodies. Now that I've got a solid body, I can mirror it across the center line, center plane, and I can use combine to subtract them with a Boolean subtract. So I select the main body, I select the bodies that I want to cut out of it. So the three surface knits and the three mirrors of it. And I cut them out of that original main mask. Finally, the very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a little slot here for a band that will go around the back of your head. This is a very easy process. We made a sketch on the right plane and there's a number of different ways that you could cut these out. Um, I'm going to show you a way that I think is important, which is from a surface. So I could just do from the sketch plane through both directions and it would just go through them both from the middle. But another option, if let's say I only wanted to cut this side out and only let's say a little bit, I could go from a surface and I could select this surface and then only let's say half a millimeter. And it would just make this indent following the same curve as this surface here. Um, but obviously that's not what I want to do. What I wanted to do was completely cut out these, these sections. So that's what I did. And there you have it. So there it is, the complete tutorial on how I made this Mortal Kombat Scorpion mask. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if you want to download the STL or learn more about me, you can check me out at my website, blackfordengineering.com. It's also in the description. Um, and I hope you keep on designing. Have a great day.